Hi guys, this is the second video about the Zim platform. Today we're going to learn on how to create a simple IP core using the Axi Light interface and we're going to see how to interface between the PS part and the PL part. Okay, okay guys, so what we're going to see today? Today we are, only, we are just going to create a simple C program that are going to multiply two numbers, okay? Two 16-bit uh, uh, numbers, okay? And uh, we're going to accelerate this multiplication using an IP core and the communication between the PS part, the, I mean the CPU and the PL part, the FPGA, using the Axi Light interface. Okay? We're going to write this, this core with very long language, but uh, I'm going to put on the, on the comments also a link to, for you to download the VHDL part, depending on what you like. The software that is going to be used on this, uh, on this tutorial will be Vivado and Zynix SDK. Both of them come if you, if you have the, the Zynx Vivado tools, okay? Okay guys, so basically what we have, we go, we're going to have here a C program that are just going to multiply two numbers, okay? And we're going to show how can we accelerate exactly this operation here. How can we, for instance, create a kind of accelerator for the multiply operation? Okay guys, the first thing that we need to do in the MicroZ port is to set the jumpers, okay? to avoid booting up from the SD card, okay? So this is the position that you guys want to use. So we connect also our platform cable USB. This is a, will be the guy that are, allow us to connect through USB to our board. Okay? And also we need a micro USB cable to connect to have to having the UART part. That's it. Okay guys, so going to tools, create IP, we can create a new uh, IP core from Vivado, okay? Now here we're just choosing its name, and later we're going to add, add the interfaces that this core is going to have. In our case, we are only going to have one Axi Light interface. And from this interface, our CPU is going to write to the register to control our IP core. For instance, the first two operands A and B that are 16 bits are going to be placed in the first register and on the and the result we are going to extract from the second register and when these ports are defined we choose to edit our IP and where is where now we are actually going to start to add our multiplier okay so now what we're going to do we're going to add our source to create our very low multiplier Okay, and uh, after this multiplier is done, uh, we're going to show you how you connect your multiplier with the generated code from the IP core generator to actually control what our IP core will be doing. Okay, so we have the clock input port, the two operands that are 16 bit wide, and the result will be stored in a 32 bit output port. Another point to observe is that we want our multiplier to be synchronized with our CPU. So when I, uh, when I show you the code of the Verilog, you're going to see that I'm going to use a always block. And this always block is going to be executed in the rising edge of our clock. And in the rising edge of our clock is, is that we are actually going to do our multiplication. Okay, so what we're going to do, we are creating a register that is going to receive the result of our always block, okay? This is the fault in Verilog, by the way, the output of the always block must always write into a register. And uh, as we said before, this always block is going to execute based in the rising edge of our clock. And what it's going to do is apply our multiplication on the operands A and B, okay? Now, at outside of our hours block, we assign to the output port product our register variable product reg. Okay? And this is how you transfer the output 
of our always block to the output of the block of the model itself. Well, with your model done, what we need to do now is instantiate our model inside our, our IP core. Okay? If you scroll down, you're going to see that uh, there is a command like add or logic here or something like this. And this is where we're going to instantiate our multiplier model. Okay? Here we create creating a wire. Okay? The wire is always the variable that will receive the output of an instantiated block. Again, this is normal very log stuff. And uh, we are going to connect the operands A and B with the upper 16 bit of the register 0 and in B the, the lower 16 bit of our, of our first register as well. Okay? The output of our multiplier we are going to place in the multiplier out wire. Okay, and then we're going to change a little bit up in a always block that maps the, the output of the registers and we're going to connect to, to this wire where the register 1 is supposed to be. And as I said before, as we want our core to be synchronous to our main clock, uh, we are just copy and paste the IP core clock with the multiplier clock. And uh, now we're going to connect our wire multiplier out where the reg one is using. That's it. We just place there in the reg one position, okay? And this should be enough, okay, to have our simple multiplier core already working. So if your very log code is okay, if everything is okay, that's the point that we're going to repackage our our IP. We're going to merge the the new file that we added now, the multiplier model, and uh, we're going to say, okay, now. We've had a package this IP and we are going to use it. Okay? Now, we just opened our previous Hello World example that, uh, if I will remember, you just have the Zinc alone and we're going to add our new IP core. Now, just clearing some space. Okay? And uh, there is a button that is Add IP. And we just type simple multiplier or something like this, and uh, Vivado will be able to look on its repositories to find the IP that we want. Okay, so that's it. This is the multiplier. Now, in order to connect our multiplier, we're going to enable the general purpose master act support in our zinc. Okay, this is quite straightforward. That's it. You go to PLPS configuration. Okay, and uh, we want to add a master GP port. After this GP port, this AXI port is enabled, uh, the button uh, run out connection automation will be smart enough, I mean, Vivado will be smart enough to create all the connection, all the blocks that you need to put in between to connect your zinc with our new core. Okay? Uh, after this is done, an important step that needs to be done is to validate our block design. Okay, there is a button uh, that you just press and it is going to check for potential errors that could appear. And uh, if it's passed, we are ready to generate our bit stream, which is the bit map that is going to program our FPGA. And just before that, we go to the address editor just to see that uh, we got an address for our IP core. Uh, axi light cores and axi full cores are going to be memory mapped in our memory space. Okay, uh, now we're creating our bit stream. This can take up to 10 minutes, and uh, we just wait to see if there is some errors. 
we just fast forward a little bit and uh, now if we open the implemented design you can see that you have the PL part I mean the FPJ part have some logic already synthesized and the uh, zinc part the PS part that is this left part in black well now that we're done what we're going to do we're going to export our bit stream to Xilinx SDK and we're going to launch it okay we're going to include our bit stream in order to let Xilinx SDK also program our FPGA and we're going to launch the Xilinx SDK is where we actually do some programming Okay, now in the Xilinx SDK, uh, as we are using a previous example from our Hello World, we're going to modify our BSP settings, okay, to first to check if our core is there, okay, that's it, and after that, the, we're going to regenerate our BSP, okay, this can take up to one minute, it's quite fast. Well, after the BSP is generated, there is a file called X parameters, and there you in, in the BSP, okay, and there you can see all the all the addresses that you created in the previous part in the Vivado is going to be there. So if you type just simple, you should see the base address of our core. Okay, this also means that everything is running fine until now. Okay. By the way, uh, we're going to change the our Hello World software to include this X parameter file, okay? We're going to create after this just a pointer to point out to our IP core, okay? By the way, should be unsigned int. Uh, the ARM processor that we have is 32 bit, so uh, we're going to point it with a 32 bit unsigned integer variable. Well, now, just to illustrate what you're going to do, we're going to create now the two short variables. Short means 16 bit in our, in our architecture. And uh, we're going to do, in a, in, at software level now, just a simple multiplication. We're just multiplying 2 by 33. And uh, we're going to do a printf of, of, of this operation. And after that, uh, we're going to try to use the same operation by using our multiply core. Now, so we're just trying to run our software. Okay, that's it. Universe is to the same. <laughs> it works. And uh, now, what you're going to do? We're going to uh, write in, in for our first register the two operands A and B. Okay. By the way, uh, just to recapitulate, this register is 32 bit, and our operands are both 16 bit. So what you're going to do? We're just going to shift left. A by 16 bits and then sum with B. So this gives you, give us the, the two operands packet into 32 bit. Okay. Uh, just take a look a little bit in the pointer arithmetic. And uh, as your sum base address plus zero, this should point to the first register. And uh, now we get the result in the second register that is base address plus one. Okay. Now we just put into the variable C base address plus one. Okay, and in theory, if everything is working, the this address, this register should have already the, the result of our previous multiplication.
So let's now just print out C and uh, let's execute the program to see if everything's working fine. Okay? So right click, run as GDB, and it works. Cool. Okay, so before we finish, let's just show, uh, just to remember that Vivado also created the C, C++ driver to handle our IP core, okay? And uh, we are just now going to the BSP settings to show how we can change the driver, okay? I think that by default, Vivado does not add nothing special in the drivers, and uh, we're going to change a little bit the preferences in the Xamix SDK to make the Xamix SDK look for look for where the where Vivado generate these drivers. Okay, it's actually in preferences. We just point out the directory of the driver section, the driver directory that Vivado generate for us. Okay, and after this step, uh, the Xamix SDK will be able to to look for a specific driver of that core. And uh, by the way, using this driver can facilitate a little bit because it's going to create some simple wrapper files that will avoid you to use the pointer arithmetic that we use in, the, in this example, in the, in the previous version, okay? It's a good thing to avoid a little bit of bugs. Sometimes dealing with pointers can uh, create some problems. Okay, so if you go to modify BSP settings, and uh, if you go to the driver part, the, uh, our driver should be available there now, okay? Uh, that's it, it's in the end. Now we just switch for the simple multiplier driver, okay? What Vivado generate is a .h file with some defined macros that uh, we, we allow us to easily write and read in the register. So now let's just change a little bit our code to include the driver, okay? Simple multiply, multiply dot h. Now we just take a look in uh, what you have inside simple multiplier dot h that we can take a look in the function, the helper functions that has been generated. Okay, by the way, the offsets and you have the write register and the read register. Okay. The write register, you just put the base address, the offset of the register that you want to write into, and the value. Now, after this, what we want to do, we want to just read the second register, okay? So we just put some comment to allow us to remember later what this code is actually doing. And uh, it should be, should be okay. Okay, this shows the offset of the second register. The function, the, not the function, sorry, the define macro is there. So we just copy it and paste. And uh, the syntax is quite simple. For the read register macro, you just put the base address and, uh, and the offset register of the register that you want to read, okay? And uh, again, you just copy and paste. Quite simple. There, automatically, uh, Xanx SDK compiles every time that you change the code. So we just try to run and let's see if it's still working. Ah, small error. We just lost our FPGA program. Just program it again. And uh, after the program of the, PG, uh, of the FPGA, so the PL part will have our multiplier there and uh, things will, will work. Now let's try again. Good, it's working. So guys, uh, next video we're going to talk a little bit more about hardware debugging.